I come to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and honey. The image that artists portray is often of a wild-looking man, someone that might cause us to cross the street so that you could avoid close contact with him. The opening lines of this poem by Thomas H. Troger Describe him this way. Wild the man and wild the place. Wild his dress and wild his face. Wilder still his words that trace. Paths that lead from sin to grace. We get the distinct feeling that John the Baptist is not someone that we might be attracted to or that we would want to follow too closely. I actually like John the Baptist because he has the courage to speak out prophetically. He has the conviction to say what many don't want to hear. But I also understand why most would not want to be associated with him or his message. Curiosity might draw us near to John, but logically, we would expect that few would become his followers. But we must remember that his ministry was always to prepare for the coming of Christ. He was to fulfill the words of the prophet Isaiah. A voice cries out, In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway to our God. I can't help but wonder if John is meant to repel us. Is John a door that's closed so that we might find the open window? Does his rough exterior lead us to more willingly embrace the comfort found in Jesus' warmth as he breaks bread with sinners? I know that at least some of you are familiar with Parker Palmer. For those who don't know, he's an author who often focuses on education, spirituality, and social change. Interestingly, those aren't necessarily three distinct subjects. In his book, Let Your Life Speak, he wrote of the Quaker concept of way, for our own understanding, we might equate way with doors that open, opportunities which become reality, and coincidences, those moments when God wants to remain anonymous, that occur at a rate that speeds us towards our destination. While at a Quaker retreat center, he was exploring some personal vocational challenges the counsel that he received, in typical Quaker fashion, was, have faith and way will open. Parker Palmer's own response to this counsel was, the only way that has opened so far is the wrong way. Wondering if God's guidance was ever going to come, he sought the advice of a candid-speaking Quaker woman. Somberly, she told him, I am a birthright friend, and in 60-plus years of living, way has never opened in front of me. With a pause that was almost long enough to deflate his hopes, she continued, but a lot of way has closed behind me, and that's had the same guiding effect. Our wild man, John the Baptist, both prepares us through repentance while he repels us with his image and troublesome message 
so that we might find Jesus and way will open. John the Baptist comes to us in our own wilderness so that we might make straight the path to God. In the quiet of Advent, we have the opportunity to look and see where way is opening and where way has closed. In our own lives, are there examples of where way has closed and kept us from finding God? Is the image that you hold of God one that might be a better example of way closing? Far too many people grew up with an image of a vindictive and vengeful God. A God who was always watching us so that we could be caught at our sins and like a bolt of lightning, punished for those transgressions. With this God, our punishment would be to send us to an eternity of damnation in the fires of hell. An image that is not from Scripture as much as it is from Dante's Inferno. Is this an image that is way closing so that we might see the God of love? God said, you are my beloved. On you my favor rests. Even as he said this at the baptism of Christ, he said it to all of humanity. Has way closed on the image of the vindictive God so that we might see the image of the God who calls us his beloved? Perhaps there's a prayer practice or lack of that while once fulfilling, no longer feeds you. Is this way closing that you might experience a new spirituality that will bring you closer to God? Let go of the old, let go of the lack of prayer, and welcome the new. Welcome this change even if, for a time, it's uncomfortable because ultimately the path will be made straight. What is it in your life that you need to abandon so that you can see the image of God before you? Are there places we've not seen way close? And if we did, would we be redirected? Would we turn around, repent, and begin to expectantly wait for the coming of Christ. Anselm was the Archbishop of Canterbury in the early 12th century. Of God, he wrote, Let me seek you in desiring you, and desire you in seeking you. Find you in loving you, and love you in finding you. In this season of Advent, those words resound with the expectant coming of Christ. Doors open for us and doors close for us. If we're attentive, both opened and closed, doors will guide us to the God who is love. Anselm continued with this advice. Enter into your mind's inner chamber. Shut out everything but God and whatever helps you to seek him. And when you have shut the door, look for him. Speak now to God and say with your whole heart, I seek your face. Your face, Lord, I desire. I seek your face. Your face, Lord, I desire. 
with your whole heart, please say it with me. I seek your face, Lord. Your face, Lord, I desire. In this expectant season of Advent, for each of you, may the words of Anselm ring true. Let me seek you in desiring you, and desire you in seeking you. Find you in loving you, and love you in finding you. Amen. Amen.